This is Mary at the Mary Atelier, and today I am going to work on a project that will be a part of a video hop. It is a mystery envelope video hop. It is hosted by Bea Grob, and her link will be in the description box below. And in the description box below, you can also see links to all the other videos in this hop. And when you're done watching mine, uh, link down to the next video in the links, and that will take you to the hop and just keep doing that. And by the time you've gone through all the videos and come back to me, you've watched them all. How fun. Mystery envelope. What is a mystery envelope swap? Well, this is something that Bea, I call her B, but I think her name in Switzerland is Bea. And she started doing this uh, last year sometime, I believe. I've only joined once before, but oh my goodness, you know what she does? She sends us, each participant, a mystery envelope. And then we take the contents of that envelope and create some art with it. Now, I've decided that I'm going to work in my April art journal again. But let's go through the contents of the envelope. I can tell you right off the bat, I can tell you right off the bat, this page will get used. What I like about this envelope is, see the strip of paper on the Backside, she has my address and her address, and it was in here, right in here, and all I have to do is remove that, and I can use this entire envelope as an insertion into my art journal, and I'll probably do my art journaling right on this envelope. Let's pull out the envelope first, or we'll pull out the content. But I am so used to using envelopes when I do the Totally Junk Junk Journal that, wow, this will be nice. This will be nice. Um, just fits. It just fits. I might try to move the label down a little if I can. Let's see if I can move this label down just a little. I begin by trimming down the envelope to fit my April art journal. And inside the mystery envelope, Bea has included this pink page, which is a file folder page. And I trim it down to fit. Basically, what I'm doing is getting the base of my signature, which is going to have eight art journal pages. Bea included this wonderful matted picture of a Victorian lady in a black dress. Oh, I'm loving her. I put a report cover over the mat to frame it off. Now, she also included a fabric that has hearts punched out of it. So I'm going to attach that to the inside of the envelope with spray adhesive. So I get out some wax paper and I give it a good coating of adhesive spray and I... I uh, attach it to the inside of the envelope, putting that report cover over the matted picture. And I love this little colorful vase of flowers. And there's a recipe page. It looks like it's cobbler's. It's in a foreign language. I can't read it. Now I'm creating a hinge out of washi tape to attach the page of flower ephemera down on the pink envelope. That washi tape really matches everything in this on this uh, signature. I don't want to just glue it down there because it has writing on the back that I want to save. Now I have the basis of my signature. I'm just kind of fitting everything together. I attach the recipe page to the back with double-sided tape. I find that double-sided tape gets rid of a lot of the air bubbles that if you were gluing it with a wet glue. Trimming everything down. I am liking what's happening here. 
And then I'm going to make flip pages out of the the lady and the pink envelope. But I decide to draw inspiration from the Victorian lady and do a drawing. And I combine it with the flower pot ephemera. And I get out my acrylic inks and I'm painting it. Now I edit out a lot of my process of painting it just in the interest of time on this video but you get the idea of what I'm doing I'm drawing inspiration from the picture that Bea sent in the mystery envelope to create my own drawing and I'm combining it with that flower pot which is no longer a flower pot on a table it's a big floor planter filled with beautiful flowers now, if you could see the picture that Bea sent me, you would see that lady is walking by a house with trees. So I put her inside of a house like she's getting ready to go out for a walk. She's holding a walking stick. There it is, all finished. I frame it out with a black marker. I'm really happy with how that turned out. That ink is so bright and colorful, and it accents the, if, the page that... They have sent, so I put them side by side in my journal. That's what I'm planning. I'm creating a hinge. Just by scoring it, I'm going to tape it down. Now you'll see that I get out the ephemera that... Uh, Bea sends, and I'm just playing with it in various spots until I get it all glued down. <laughs> I decided to go ahead and outline all my pages with the black marker. It just pulls everything in this signature together. I add some doodled trim in the upper right-hand corner and the lower left-hand corner, outlining the flower pot ephemera in black. really happy with how everything's being pulled together in this. Putting some black lines along the page, the matted page of this lady just makes makes it pop. It makes it pop. Black marker along the inside of the envelope, the inside front and back covers. And on the front and on the back <laughs> there I have I have my signature I have my signature and I'm really happy with how this is coming together I'm really happy with how it's coming together now I decide to outline each one of these little black hearts and this takes some time so you'll see where I actually do skip some of this process because it takes me a good hour maybe to do all of this so I just keep outlining until I get to the part to where I am working over the picture that Bea painted on the front of the envelope. I don't want those outlines to soak through, so I decide that I'm going to coat just that part of the envelope on the inside with matte medium, thinking that it'll create a barrier so that my ink will not soak through and ruin the face of that pretty lady. And so I'm testing it here. And yeah, I think that that did the trick. So I just continue outlining each little heart. And then I decide to put little dots inside of each one. Now this takes me a, a pretty long time to do all this. So you'll see I skip down, cut out part of it in my video because I just, you get the idea of what I'm doing, and I love the effect on this. It's a very, very much a, a lace page. It just fits with the overall theme of this signature. Really happy with how this is coming together. Now, since some of it soaked through to the front, some of these hearts soaked through to the front, I just go ahead and draw them out and it matches what I've done on the inside. I didn't have to worry about it on the back because it uh, I had the recipe page on the back and that 
created a barrier. So, but yes, I really do like how this page has come together. You'll see that I put a notation down at the bottom of the corner there where the little lady is that Bea did that. Now I'm going to attach the matted picture with the lady and the painting that I did as flip pages on the inside of the signature. And I'm using really wide Gorilla Tape to do that, the clear transparent tape. And the envelope is just wide enough that both of these pages fit perfectly. The Gorilla Tape strengthens the spine so that when I attach it inside of my journal, it won't tear the envelope the, when I stitch it inside of my journal. Now I'm starting to use the ephemera that Bea sent. And I have some of these ribbon bands that I got on sale. And I'm after the ribbon. I eventually wind up cutting the clasps off. They have a clasp at the top of these ribbon bands. I think they were meant to be wristbands or something. I'm not sure. I, I picked them up on sale. I have two of them. And I'm attaching some foil doily that Bea sent as ephemera and a beautiful green button to the bottom of this ribbon band and just letting it hang down the front of the envelope as a decorative element. There's some white trim that she sent that I will be putting on the edge of this page and I'm using double-sided tape to attach things down at least temporarily until I can glue it down. I'll glue everything down when uh, when everything's put together but the double-sided tape holds it very nice. Creating a hinge on the inside front with the the washi tape. Here I'm attaching that, that white trim down. It just adds it just adds to this page. It pulls everything together as a composite whole. There's another gold doily that she sent. I'm loving that. Putting some of the white trim on the inside back page. I had to put this video into fast forward. Uh, at least a little, because there's just so much. When you do eight art journal pages, <laughs> I worked all afternoon on this. You would have a four-hour video. So, now, Bea sent some of these little black beads I'm not sure exactly what they are. I don't work with these normally. But what I'm doing is I'm creating a black line down the front. A lacy line. I call it a lacy line. I really do like that effect. And I'm putting it over double-sided tape temp as a temporary bond. And then you'll see that I, after I get everything placed like I want on those with those black beads on that double-sided tape... I go over it with some glossy accents. And the glossy accents also acts as a bond to hold the report cover down. Now I use glossy accents and put some of those beads on the inside of that gold doily. Creates a wonderful little decorative piece up in the uh, left hand corner. And I heat my glossy accents with a heat gun just because I don't have time to let it dry completely. I put a little piece of cellophane over that so I can continue working with my other pages. Now I have another one of those ribbon bands and I'm going to do the same thing with another gold doily on the inside back corner. I'm attaching everything down with this this adhesive. This double-sided tape is pretty strong. It holds everything down pretty good. I, I don't worry too much about things falling off. 
And I will go back and secure everything with a, a more secure glue. And I'm using that double-sided tape again to hold all those little black beads in the center of the doily. I'm really liking this. It just adds some, some decorative elements to that page that is really a lace page. I don't do too much other to this. I like it just like it is. I, I love the overall effect of it. Now I'm just kind of cleaning up my work area. Bea sent a, a little band of little white buttons and I decide that I'm going to attach that right below the postmark. I leave the postmark on this envelope just to remind me that this entire signature is created from a mystery envelope that Bea sent me from Switzerland. And it will go into my art journal. This is an art journal signature. I'm attaching down that washi tape. I, I really like how I like how I can pull things from my stash that really complement what I'm doing. They all come from purchases and elements that I got at different times and I love how I call them composite pages. It, I get a piece here, I get a piece there and it all comes together. Now I'm adding some decorative trim around the edges just doing black dots with my marker. It's very French. Very, very French. Very, I love this lace effect. And I'm doing these black dots on all of the pages. Pulls everything together as an entire whole. Put some of them around the flower pot page. Around that pink page. I'm just loving it. Okay, I am finished. I'm finished. Let me tell you, I worked all afternoon on this. I'll bet I put four, four and a half, maybe five hours in on this. So I have gone into fast forward from some and I've skipped some. But I have six pages here. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Very, very happy. This is the envelope that Bea sent the mystery envelope in. And this is Bea's art right in here. I put her name. And this piece was a part of the ephemera that was sent and the buttons. And this is the postmark. And as you flip it on the next page, this was a cutout piece of material. And I went ahead and used a spray adhesive to attach that down. And then I outlined each one of these little hearts and put all these little black dots in there. Very fun. I love, I love how the cellophane envelope up here picks up what's behind here. I love it. And then this ribbon was just some that I had that I got on sale. And the washi tape, of course. And there's some trim here on the side, some white trim that came in the envelope. You turn the page. I did not do much to this page because I just wanted it to be what it was. This was a piece of fabric. And you can kind of see there's some interesting uh, plants, it looks like, going on in the background, some colors. And I left it just as it was. This was a file folder piece, a half of one that was in the envelope, the mystery envelope. And this was in the mystery envelope. And I just made a flip out of it. I hid my project documentation right in here, mystery envelope challenge hosted by Bea Grubb, Switzerland. That's where she's from. And then I put these pages created by Mary Dell Abrams, the Mary Atelier, April 2019. And then that's just kind of hidden journaling. I've got some black trim around the edges here. I really like how the colors kind of pulled together. Very, uh, very Swiss, very French. Then, oh yeah, you saw me paint this. 
This was done with my acrylic inks. It dries real fast and it's so vivid when it's dry. I'm really happy with this. Of course, now this was pulled from this lady, which was a part of the ephemera that Bea sent. And the flower pot here, which I made a big floor flower pot, was this right here, which looks like it might be in a window. I just enlarged it. And the trim here, these little bead buttons are put in with um, glossy accents. And I think it's dry. I did try to dry it with a heat gun. Of course, it bubbled up. But I think it's dry. I'm, I'm not feeling anything pulling off there. Here's some more of these little beads that I just put on a piece of double-sided tape over here. And then I put some glossy accents on top of that. And there's a report cover over this to protect this piece. This is the back of this lady, this piece here. And I just made a flip. I made another flip page. So I've got two flips. Actually, I've got four pages here and four. I've got eight pages on this. That's why it took me all afternoon. So you're not going to see the entire things. I'll fast forward through some and I'll have to skip some. Uh, doing this work here on both the inside cover and the backside cover took a lot of time. I'll probably cut that out. Here's some more ephemera that Bea sent. And then I just have another piece of matching ribbon over here. Just kind of fills in that space. And then the back side looks like some cobbler recipes. It made me hungry. <laughs> but it looks like it's very um, calorie. Uh, what do you say? It looks like you can go ahead and eat it. It doesn't look like there's a lot of calories. So... Uh, Palmero, Palmero, Palmero Cobbler. Uh, these are cobblers. Cobbler Val, Valician. I'm not sure what it is. I don't speak French or Swiss or whatever this is. So there's my page. The Here's my pages. Eight pages. How fun this was to do. Now I intend on putting this inside of my April art journal, probably right in this space, right in here. And I will, toward the end of April, I will stitch that in. And it will stick out just a little, but that's okay because I've compensated for extra space in here. So, yes, I'm very, very happy with what's going on here. Let's get back to my pages. Very, very happy with it. So, thank you for watching. And don't forget to go down to the description box below. Check out the links by the other artists. This is a really fun hop. Uh, thank Bea for her generosity in contributing the ephemera. It's so fun to use ephemera that comes from another country. And in fact, this came from Switzerland. So it's really fun, really fun to do this. So Bea deserves a note of gratitude. And she did this for everybody in the hop. So I can't wait to see what everybody else created. Thank you for watching, and of course, I will see you on the next page.